Hey, teacher friends, this is Carrie Rickman from Create Your Balance with Lurcy, and I'm so excited to share this time with you today. I'm a 22-year veteran teacher turned coach, mentor, and trainer to help teachers develop their craft in teaching cross-curricular. I cannot wait to share all of my tips and tricks with you today. Are you ready to take your classroom to the next level? Let's get started, shall we? Today's podcast is all about teaching thematic units cross-curricular. Have you ever wondered how to teach this way? Have you ever done it before? It might seem kind of scary, but trust me, the more that you do it, the more you get better at it, and it's very easy. And it's simple. You just have to know how to plan for it and how to get your materials and supplies together and know what your standards are. Did you know that you can integrate balanced literacy and thematic units to make a perfect combo? Of course, it takes a lot of planning, creating, organizing, and time. But once you have all that accomplished, it will help your teacher flow a lot more effectively. I will walk you through it. So keep keep listening to find out more. The first thing you need to do is to look at your standards for science and social studies. That's where your main drive for your thematic unit will stem from. You have to decide which thematic units you and your team want to teach. You may be thinking, yuck, thematic units are a trend of the past. Well, that might have been true back in the 80s where you would only teach about apples and their life cycles and not use apples to teach properties of matter, adjectives, or five senses. The standards have changed a lot since then, and so have our approach to teaching thematically. I found an easy way to integrate Reader's Workshop, Writer's Workshop, Math Workshop, Guided Reading, Focus Poetry, and Word Work together so that my students can make better connections. It is so amazing and fun. The students love it. Let's start with a standard for social studies. I live in Texas, so in March we do a big thematic unit on Texas symbols and historical figures since March the 2nd is Texas Independence Day. Here are the teaks that help us know what to teach in Texas about Texas figures. Teak number one, identify historical figures such as Sam Houston who have influenced the community, state, and nation. Number two, describe the origins of customs, holidays, and celebrations of the community, state, and nation such as San Jacinto Day. Number three, explain state patriotic symbols including Texas flags and the Alamo. Number four, Recite and explain the meaning of the Texas Pledge and identify the anthems and mottos of Texas. Okay, so now that you have selected your standards for your thematic unit, break up your balanced literacy components and subjects. This is helpful to know what genres and what mentor texts you will be reading for each subject. For Reader's Workshop, I will be reading some fiction texts. For example, Armadillo Rodeo, The Legend of the Blue Bonnet, Legend of the Indian Paintbrush, Click Clack Moo Cows the Type, Who Took the Farmer's Hat, when the cows came home, the big red barn, meanwhile back at the ranch, and when the cows came home. Writer's Workshop, I'm going to be reading some fiction stories and introduce some procedural texts. I'm going to read Armadillo Chili, The Lonesome Star, and How to Be a Cowboy. We're going to be writing some procedural texts during Writer's Workshop using first, then, next, and last. For Math Workshop, we're going to be having our 120th day celebration. We combine our 120th day celebration with our Texas day. So we're going to be reading some Texas counting books. For example, The Three Little Javelinas, One, Two, Three, Texas, Counting the Texas Way, and The Horse and Hen Count to Ten. We're going to be doing a lot of 120th day celebration activities during our math blocks and um, read a lot of Texas books that go along with that. For word work, we're going to read some Texas ABC books, Words in ABC Order, Talk about different syllables. For example, L is for Lone Star, T is for Texas, and the Texas alphabet. For guided reading, we're going to be reading leveled books about armadillos, rodeos, cowboys, horses, cows, deserts, or the Alamo and the Magic Treehouse called Ghost Town at Sundown. For focus poem, we're going to be doing the Texas, uh, Texas anthem, which is the Texas song, Texas Our Texas. For social studies, we're going to read some nonfiction texts including Texas Symbols, Texas Heroes, The Alamo, San Jacinto Day, Sam Houston, The Texas Pledge, Texas Motto, and The Texas State Anthem. Alamo A to Z, The Voices of the Alamo, Cowboys and Cowgirls. B is for Buckaroo, Good Night San Antonio, Texas Jack at the Alamo, and Susanna at the Alamo. For science, we're going to read nonfiction texts called Oil Spill. We're going to do a science experiment about how oil and water mix together. For spelling, you can do any word list that you want, and I make our challenging words such as rodeo, 
cowboy, Texas, oil, cowgirl, horse, Alamo, cowboy, and etc. Next, I like to set up my theme center with Texas activities. This is my center that can be switched out between science and social studies, depending on your theme. This is what my Texas thematic, uh, thematic center looks like. I have posters of the Texas heroes. I have a poster of the regions of Texas and I have puzzles of Texas. I have Texas books. I have an Alamo model with soldiers. I have stencils. I have the six flags over Texas. I have oil in a jar, pecans, blue bonnets, models of cowboys, cattle, and more. I also have the center template that I use for the students to complete at the center. They illustrate their favorite part of the center, and then they write two sentences about their favorite item. Okay, are you still with me? Next, you will want to decide which activities, interactive notebooks, craftivities, experiments, shared reading, interactive writing, story templates, etc. that you will have be having your students engage in. I'll give you a couple of examples. For Reader's Workshop, my mini lesson is going to be reviewing sequencing, beginning, middle, and end, and text connections. My students make craftivities of the legend of the Indian paintbrush, the legend of the blue bonnet during their independent reading time. For Writer's Workshop, we're going to be doing procedural text, so we're going to be writing how to be a cowboy or cowgirl, or how to make chili. My students will write a procedural story about how to be a cowgirl and cowboy, and then we watercolor a sunset with silhouettes of a windmill and cowboys. And these are beautiful um, projects that you could hang in your hallway. We also make chili in the classroom with a crock pot. So for the crock pot, I have six cans of chili with beans, one package of hot dogs sliced up, and two bags of Texas shaped chips, two bags of grated cheese, and then plastic bowls and forks and spoons for the students. So you can make a crock pot chili in the classroom, and then you can write a story about how you make chili, and then they can make a craftivity to go with it, and then you can hang it up in their hallway. For math workshop, I told you about our 120th day celebration. So on that day, we have our students dress up like cowboys or cowgirls, and we have stations around our neighborhood with 120 Texas games and activities. We use a 10 frame that they can count out the different kinds of foods and make a trail mix. So for example, we have goldfish, raisins, pretzel sticks, chocolate chips, gummy bears, marshmallows, and much more. It is so much fun. They count out their items, they put them in their bag, and they can have a trail mix snack. They also can have a race to 120. They have a 120 stacking cup race. They have 120 reasons why we love our school. And for social studies, we were talking about Texas maps and regions, the Texas symbols, the Alamo, and we use vocabulary cards on my pocket chart. When they write stories, we use vocabulary cards in our story. We make an Alamo using beans and write a story about the Alamo. And this is a nonfiction informational text that they write about. We, all can, we can also create a Texas map with cities and rivers. We label the Texas cities and label the rivers, and we put a big star in the middle for Austin for the capital. We also make Texas symbols book. We have a cover page, table of contents, the state, the state symbols, the author page, my favorite symbol, and glossary. So each day during social studies, I might read a different book about the different symbols. So we talk about the armadillo, the blue bonnet, the pecan tree, the mockingbird, the state, ro the state um, activity uh, sport is rodeo, the state food is chili, and so on and so on. For Fahrenheit Friday, which is my science experiment on Friday, we are going to do learning about oil and water. We learn about how one of the Texas natural resources is oil and how oil is used in our everyday life. We talk about spindle top and how it was the first famous oil rig in Texas. And then we mix oil and water and predict what will happen, which one will sink and which one will float. So we do an interactive notebook and then the students draw which one is going to sink and which one is going to float. They always think that the water is going to float, but that's not the case. The oil is going to float because the oil is, is lighter than the water. Then to top it all off, we end our thematic unit by visiting the Alamo on a Saturday field trip. We have a picnic lunch on the grass and we go shopping at the gift shop. This is so much fun. My Texas unit is probably one of my favorite units of all to teach during the school year. The students have a blast and they learn so much about our Texas history and Texas symbols. I hope that I gave you some ideas about how to plan for a thematic unit. It can be done if you carefully plan. And the best part is you'll have it done for next year. Your students will learn so much and make so many great connections. I hope that you learned a little bit more about how to create a thematic unit. 
I would love to hear your thoughts about how you put together a thematic unit. If you would like to have a coaching call, my first coaching call will be on January the 22nd. And so if you have any questions about how to teach cross-curricular or how to create your thematic unit, please let me know and I'd be happy to help you. Thank you so much for listening for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon. See you next time.